change, scale impact, that's a constant challenge for social enterprises. What are the mechanisms to achieve it? Are there mechanisms to achieve it? Parvati Menon, founder and CEO of Innovation Alchemy, has some answers. Uh, Innovation Alchemy for the Uninitiated offers consulting and advisory services to small businesses and social enterprises. Parvati, I think it just boils down to scale impact. And are you finding that social enterprises today are more concerned about scale impact? Um, have they matured in that sense? You've interacted, advised, dealt with a number of them. Yes, absolutely. I think and that evolution in this ecosystem is very, very uh, clear to see. Uh, Ten years ago, you had very interesting models, enterprising change makers who had different and innovative thoughts to be able to solve a development um, solu uh, you know, issue. In the last 10 years, we have seen an influx of investment. We've seen an influx of new ideas from all over the world. We've seen an influx of interest in India and India's ability to solve some of these problems. What that means is that the, the moment money starts coming in, it starts to also push the agenda for scale. Can you show me uh, you know, how you can reach this water model into 10 districts? Can you take it across three states? Because then I will know that you are a scalable model. I can put more money into you. Those conversations are very interesting because it pushes the entrepreneur to start thinking about scale in a very different way. It's an opportunity to actually grow. And it also encourages the ecosystem, the regulation, the, the country as a whole to start thinking of how do we support these entrepreneurs who could now be solving problems at a much larger level. So and yes. That, and that really ties in with the transformational change issue that is being debated and discussed at Sankal 2013. But a very basic question. Are Indian social enterprises, the entrepreneurs, thinking like that? Do they have the appetite for scale? Have they built it in early enough? I'm borrowing some of your thoughts here. No, absolutely. Like we were talking about earlier, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very important point. Uh, uh, appetite for scale is not something, uh, uh, you know, you, you can of course build it over a period of time and once your idea has worked in two villages or maybe, you know, one larger district and you may have interest, got generated interest in the government, then you start saying, can I be at a national level? Sure, that's also a route available. But given the fact that these are big issues we are trying to solve, we don't have another two decades to solve the education problem, for instance, in India. In that scenario, it's very important that social entrepreneurs start the journey with scale in their DNA. If I, how can I solve the problem of education in the state of, say, Rajasthan? Uh, if I have to do that, uh, what is the size of a prototype that makes sense for me to be able to do? Maybe then your prototype is not one village. It might actually be two districts. So the moment you shift your lens and you say, let me start with thinking scale and then work backwards to a prototype, you are changing the dialogue. That's transformational. One village, two taluks, 10 districts, not transformational. Because we just, our problems are very large and we really need to think that size. That's an ideal thought that you've expressed. Is it a practical thought? On the ground, are entrepreneurs thinking like that? I'm coming back to the reality check again and again because I want to put my finger on the pulse of how enterprises are actually behaving. In uh, what I'm experiencing right now uh, is that uh, we, there are not enough entrepreneurs still thinking that way. Uh, and the challenges for that are also real. Uh, I think the fact that there is transformation needed is very apparent right now. But the entrepreneurs very often, especially the incubation uh, you know, ecosystem that is evolving right now, uh, we are supporting and strengthening ideas at a very, very early stage. They are often also first-time entrepreneurs who are getting involved in this. Appetite, therefore, is both a, you know, a factor of experience as well as a, a sort of a having failed enough to know that it really doesn't matter, you can go ahead. So it's still starting small, and uh, I think that's the debate right now, because investors want to see scale, they don't invest enough, and the entrepreneur wants to be able to prove it somewhere so that he can get his next funding, and that in the mid middle of all that is actually where scale is stuck. Um, I think the need is, and I'm just going to step a little ahead on this. No, I don't think we are seeing enough scale right now. Uh, but we need, for scale to happen, we need a lot more money put up front. We need a lot more um, uh, freedom to entrepreneurs to actually be able to go out and experiment. We also need the involvement of corporates and government because government needs to be able to give larger playing fields and say, why don't you help me solve this problem in a district? Because a district then suddenly gives you a larger catchment. Uh, we're not seeing that collaboration enough yet. Uh, well, you preempted my next question, which is about the gaps in the ecosystem. Right. And all of this government collaboration with corporates, etc., comes into that. Um, 
again, at a, at a more sort of real anecdotal level, um, you know, what is the most um, interesting recent experience that you've had where a solution which the entrepreneur was seeing only as limited impact, maybe by geography or number of people, where you've been able to guide counsel and steer them towards a larger impact uh, um, solution. Is there something that comes to mind? I know it's hard to describe all these things in a snap, but I'm going to push you to try that. Sure. Um, I'm going to try probably giving you two examples and see what, what makes more, uh, uh, what's more relevant. Um, one is a model that we're working with, which is related to school dropout, rural school dropout uh, unemployability. Uh, it's a very large issue in India. Many, many, many children actually finish school up till fifth and eighth and actually drop out. Uh, over a period of the next few years, we're going to have a couple of hundred million youth uh, or more, as per the statistics, who are uneducated. Uh, therefore, they are unemployable. And uh, this particular program that we are working with is um, uh, was looking at training centers in you know sort of rural, semi-urban areas where they would children would come in, youth would come in, get training on say um, mobile repair or anything of that nature. But they were able to touch about 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 youth in a year. But considering that you have a couple of hundred million who need it, even if you were to take your 40,000 up to 100,000, you'd really not be even scratching the surface. When we looked at the insights in this particular issue, we found that one of the biggest challenges is only those who are initiated already into thinking about opportunity come to the training centers. There's a whole 90% of youth out there, of the uh, school dropouts, who don't even come to the centers. So there is a whole aspiration gap. There is a role model gap. We need to initiate at a very different level even before they come to the centers. And that's what we experimented with. And we did a lot of work in Maharashtra in prototyping these new ideas. And the year we worked with that team, they reached about 100,000 youth. This year, they're reaching 200,000 youth. We are already helping them build an employment exchange model for the unorganized sector. And in about three years, we should be able to reach about a million youth every year through this particular model. So great acceleration of targets in yes. a sense that's taken yes. place. You talked or referred to another example. The other example which we are actually working on right now, which is very exciting and it's also, uh, in fact, Vinay is part of our session later today also, is Akshay Patra. Now, uh, from the social enterprise lens, uh, one might say that Akshay Patra is fairly scaled. They are reaching about uh, 1.3 million children every day through their midday meal program. The government of India through the midday meal program has to reach 11 crore children. So even if they increase their targets to 5 million children a day, they would still be under 5% of what India needs to reach. So when you look at scale, it's not about the scale of just the organization. It's scale with respect to something. In this case, with respect to the bigger problem. So when we started supporting them and working with them, and the whole team is a very innovative team, we sat down to brainstorm, and it became very clear that our current model, Akshay Patra model, is around centralized kitchens. And there's only so much of the work that you can do with a centralized kitchen because it takes a long time, sometimes two hours to take to food out. We started, we went out and we looked at kitchens all over the world. We looked at fuel systems across the world. We looked at basic things like, you know, the, the, the uh, McDonald's model or the KFC model. And we found that can we do a midday meal program through a hub and spoke approach? Yep. And uh, we are at very early stages of that process. We are going to be prototyping in Bangalore East starting in about a month's time. Uh, but I think from what we have been able to work out now, from the financial simulation store shows us we are being able to bring the costs down by about 25-30%. As a result, we're being able to add a meal, which means the child will now get a breakfast and a lunch, which is far more nutrition than they are getting right now, which is phenomenal, at a lower cost, increasing the ability of the community to get engaged because we are designing it around a hub and spoke community-based model. Um, I think fundamentally we could shift the way kitchens are done. And in early conversations with the, uh, with, the, with the ministry who's looking at the midday meal program, we find that the hub and spoke could be a solution to India's midday meal program because right now our decentralized kitchens are just not being able to serve quality, uh, nutritive food to children. Consistency must be a huge issue huge. on that yes. as well. Yes. Uh, you know, it's heartening to hear of all of these examples. I wish we had time to discuss more of them. Parvati Menon, thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me.